You don't need skill, you don't have to be a brain. You just call Norm to play the dumb birthday game. Play the dumb, dumb birthday game. Okay, that's what we'll be doing. You betcha. Okay, and I'm just going to first of all uh, talk with Ken uh, Newman, who's the WBZ 24 hour traffic network reporter. Hello, Ken. Hello, Norm. Hello. 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 <laughs> uh, I, I wondered over the past uh, heat wave, uh, were there many cars that were uh, kind of boiling over in the radiators, thus causing tremendous traffic jams of millions of cars backed up all the way from the central artery down to? Um, say Delaware? <laughs> well, uh, I think that'd be exaggerating a little bit. We did actually have a lot of overheats, though. Even tonight. Even tonight there were overheats, and the temperature's gone down quite a good deal. It's uh, only 60, a little under 67 degrees at this moment. Do you feel a cool breeze? Because well, you, you, you're locked into an air-cooled building anyway. You know, to be honest with you, it's freezing up here. It really is. Well, that, that must uh, score a lot of points with people who are still stifling <laughs> in their apartments. I have to bring a sweatshirt when I come up here. Yeah. No, it is. It's kind of cool in here as well, too, but we're kind of uh, we're kind of lucky. But the, uh, the, the weather has changed quite a good deal, and those who are still uh, having a problem with the heat uh, probably uh, will notice uh, quite a change as the hours go by. But it is only, it's almost down to 66 degrees. Which is uh, quite time. What am I rambling on about? I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> when, when this old guy sits here all night talking about the weather, you know that uh, we're all in some kind that of trouble. That we're in for a good dumb birthday game. Well, really, that's how I, you can tell. I, that's right. A really stupid dumb birthday game. Okay, let's see who else is playing the game. We have Craig, who is in uh, North Bill Ricca. Hello, Craig. Good morning, Norm. How are you? Good, thank you. I wonder if you could pick it up just a little bit and be sparkling and exciting, because I have a feel, feeling that this game today is going to be kind of a dodo. Oh, I don't think so. It never has been in the past. Every hey. Anytime that, I hear it, it's good. Hey, that's the way to go, Craig. That was a good way to do that. Got to think positive. Okay, now, you were the, you're the same Craig I just talked to a while ago? We were exchanging. No, no, no. no. Oh, that was another Craig. Yes, that guy was from TV. I heard him on my way home from work. Okay, what kind of work do you do? I work for, I work for General Electric. I called you about four years ago during the summer. Do you remember? Uh, Son of a gun, I don't remember that. You called me four years ago, and it slipped my mind. Oh, you, you were supposed to remember, because I told you I'd call you back tonight and ask you. That's right. Four years ago, you called me and said, in 1995, I'm going to call you back. Yep. And okay. here I am. And here you are. Okay, good. Uh, we have Pete from Lawrence. Hi, Pete. Hello, Norm. Hello. What interesting things do you have to tell us before we get into the heat of the game and all the excitement? Uh, uh, there with. Well, originally I called to make a comment on uh, the caller whose girlfriend was having a problem. He's helping her out just by being there listening to her. I'm sorry, say that once more. I, no, no, I went out to the bathroom while you were talking yeah. and I missed that. The girl who was having a problem with her job and everything, she wasn't happy? Yeah. He, he's helping her just by being there listening to her. Didn't I just tell him that? I don't. Well, maybe in, in some ways, but I thought I told him exactly that same kind know. of way. To be by her side when she needed help and to just to, to be there that she needed somebody. Yeah. Didn't I say that? Who you needs your cockamamie advice, Pete? I think I lost track of yeah, that. Yeah, I think you lost track, Pete. I think you were going to the bathroom at the time. <laughs> I was giving some splendid advice, Pete. Anyway, you haven't played the game with us for a while, have you? No, I haven't. Okay, well, tonight is your chance to shine and... As you know, uh, uh, should you win or should whoever may win, uh, does win a really cockamamie prize to go, to go so. along with the cockamamie <laughs> qualities of this. Okay, and, and of course we have James from Indiana is with us uh, also uh, today. Hi, James. Good morning, Norman. Anybody call you Jim or do you just James all the time? Well, Bob calls me Jim. Yeah. But you can call me James. Why is that? Well, uh, I feel more dignified when I talk to you. I see. You feel more dignified. Why is that? Do, do I bring out the dignity in you? Do you have dignity? Are you a dignified person? Yes, I am. I, see. I well, enjoy let's... being around good people, and you are definitely a good person. Good Norm. people. Good people. I'm a good people. All right. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we also have with us uh, Hope Shower, who is uh, with us, too. She's the produce, one of the producers 
here at uh, WBZ, which is blessed <laughs> with probably the greatest bunch of producers Absolutely. in the world. Uh, <laughs> and I just want to say that you're, I found out today that you're definitely on the cutting edge because what they're talking about in society now is the dumbing down of education. And I just want to say that here you are, you're part of the dumbing down of America. And I'm what is that? What does that mean exactly? The dumbing down? What does that you know, mean? You know, I'm too, I'm dumbing down. <laughs> I don't know. You, you don't have any idea. <laughs> I, I, I think this is going to be the most cockamamie game that we've ever had. I just, I have no hope for this thing at all. I'm ready to throw in the, and not only that, but there aren't too many people of any interesting note who were born on this day on top of this everything. Is a, this is an extra dumb... Oh, this dumb is this is really... I might just throw in the towel and we may get out of the field and pick up the band and forget <laughs> forget everything else. You know, I think that uh, that word cockamamie is really making a comeback here. Cockamamie is a good... Yeah, it's a good word. It's descriptive and uh, I hope it does make a comeback. Uh, you know, today is the birthday of Orville Redenbacker. <gasps> oh, I'm such a fan. Oh, shut up. <laughs> is that the best we could do, Orville Redenbacher? Uh, Orville Redenbacher, the, the, uh, the, <laughs> the, pop, the popcorn tycoon. No, the popcorn tycoon. Yeah, he mentioned, but he's from Brazil, Indiana. He graduated from high school in 1924, third in a class of 99, obviously a very bright man. Did you get that date, by the way? That's uh, significant. Those of you who are professional birthday uh, Players, yeah, that's sort of spot us, spot those, spot those kind of thing. Graduated high school in 1924, uh, so you sort of have uh, building back from that. Have an idea of just uh, how old he had to be then, and what year he was born in, and all that kind of stuff. He majored in agronomy and genetics at Purdue University, and he graduated from there in 1928. In 1987, his popcorn business. Past the one billion dollar sales mark, so that's uh, Orville Redenbacker. Now he's got his grandson, who's on those commercials with him, and he's just as ugly as his grandfather. They look they look like the same person, don't they? He looks like he looks like I would assume Orville, his grandfather, looked back to when he was graduating high school back in 1924. Mm -hmm. I think he dresses the same too. Mm -hmm. I, he probably is wearing his his grandfather's clothes. <laughs> probably tie. probably was handed down to him. The bow tie. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, he's probably proud of the fact that uh, he's probably saying yes. Uh, popcorn is uh, very much what mm -hmm. built my family, and I I'm so proud to be part of that family and part of the popcorn business. It's probably just a marketing scheme. They're really not geeks. They're really. <laughs> Swab guys, they just yeah, put on that yeah. persona. Mm -hmm. They're probably somebody else is running the business, and these probably are not Redenbackers at all. <laughs> they're probably just models pretending they're Redenbackers. <laughs> anyway, Redenbacker sounds like kind of a sneaker, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. I um, I wouldn't go into a professional basketball game without my Redenbackers. It's like a combination of uh, Birkenstocks and uh, Reeboks. No, it is nothing like that. No, nothing <laughs> like that at all. So stop saying foolish things. Okay, Ken, how old do you think Orville Redenbacher is? Oh, uh, I, oh I didn't get to do my calculations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's some, somebody's breathing very hard. Do you think that could be because they're they're thinking erotic thoughts about Orville Redenbacher? Is, is somebody, does somebody have a case of asthma? No, that's not that I know of. No, yeah. I mean... Yeah, because I can hear that heavy breathing. Now, see, I have a, a, a kind of asthmatic condition myself, so normally that would be me. <laughs> but I can tell I'm talking, so that's not me. Okay. Well, yeah, whoever uh, it is has stopped anyway. Maybe they died. No, I think that was, I think that might have been me, Norm. Oh, uh, do you have do you have asthma? Yes, I do. I see. Well, that's good. Then you and I are kinfolk. <laughs> Let's both breathe together, okay? Oh, so you can snort and everything and wheeze. <laughs> the family that wheezes together, squeezes together, or pleases together, something. Anyway, Ken, how old is Orville uh, right back? Well, I'd say he's got to be entering his 87th. Well, he's 87, I'd say. 87, okay. okay. Uh, James, how old do you think he is? 89. 89, okay. And Pete? I think I'll go right in the middle of those two and say 88. Okay, Craig? I'm going to go with Pete, too, 88. 88. Okay, Hope? 77. 
Okay, 88 is exactly right. Oops. <laughs> so Craig and Pete actually won that. And so he uh, must have graduated high school when he was seven. Whoops. <laughs> no, he, see, he graduated. He's a very smart guy. Graduated in 24. He graduated. He's a man. He graduated. He graduated in 1924, is correct, and he would have been, he might have been 18. At one point, uh, at one point you had to go to, for 13 grades instead of 12, as, as they do now. Ah. In which case, uh, six, four, two, he would have been, uh, he would have been born in 1906, if that were the case. Add that to 88, you only get 1994, which is this year, isn't it? Uh, no, it's 95 now, isn't it? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I don't know. These years go by, just go by so fast when you're having a whoopee time of it. Okay, so he, well, anyway, uh, Reuben Blades. Uh, Reuben Blades, the actor. Oh. I, I don't know what movie has he been in. What and, movie has he been in? I'm not really sure. I just know him as a musician more than an actor. I know him as a yeah. sandwich. Oh. Yeah, Reuben, that's true, yes. I know him as an ice skate. <laughs> an ice skate that you... That you, you skate while you're having a sandwich. Uh, ice skate with sauerkraut and, and what, pumpernickel? It says new edible ice skates. Hey. Craig, how old do you think Reuben Blades is? I don't really have any other wow, information I about that. I don't even recognize the name. Oh, I'll throw it a number 67. I'm a, how much, 57? 67. 67. Okay, Pete, what do you think? Well, I'll throw it out and say 65. <laughs> 55 or 65? 55. 55. 65. 65. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, James, what do you think? 54. 54, says James. Ken? Uh, I don't know. 50, I guess. 50. Okay. Hope? I'm going to say 48. Okay, 48 is the closest. He's actually only 46. Mm. Reuben Blades. He's Not a really. young guy, whoever he is. Yeah, I could, I I yeah. He's yeah. a famous Latin Star. Right, yes, and a musician. Yeah. It sounds like a soap opera name, Ruben Blades. Fabulous actor. Mm. Okay, how about Stuart Copeland? There's another, but we got nobody really big names. A rock drummer and composer. Oh, that's the police. Uh, with the, with the, the police, that's right. He was with the police from 1977 uh, with the trio police. Biggest hit, Every Breath You Take. And that's the oh, only we we got the Pete wheezing again just at the very thought of that. No, with, that wasn't me that time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, with e with e every breath you take was recorded in 1983. That was a big hit that year. And uh, <laughs> do I sound like I'm really trying to pretend this game is really fun? Gotcha. You know the way my voice is rising, and I'm getting I'm getting just so upbeat about this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll start with you, Hope. How old is uh, Stuart Copeland? Mm -hmm. 42. Okay, what do you think, Ken? I think uh, he's only 40. He's only 40. Can you hear me writing that down? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. James, what do you think? I think he's 43. James thinks he's 43, okay. <laughs> what does Pete think? I'll say 41. <laughs> okay, what what does Craig think? I'm going to say 44, Norm. 44, okay. 43 is actually correct, and you all very, yes. very close. So that's James from Indiana. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, I like that, uh, that burst of enthusiasm, James. That was really nice. I'm sorry, Norm. No, no, no. You don't be sorry. I'm, I'm praising you for that. It's Thank the you, most sir. excitement. Yeah, that was really right? nice. Yeah. I just, I just woke me up. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's, here's a, here's a fine actor. I hope you know his name because he's a, actually, I've seen him in, in live theater quite a few times. His name is Barnard Hughes. Barnard. He, he, Barnard Hughes. He's been in, he's been in, in uh, movies and he's been in, on broad, on Broadway. And he was also on the soap The Guiding Light. He won an Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actor in a single appearance as a judge on the Lou Grant Show. Mm -hmm. So it'd be hard to remember him that. He was only in one episode, but won an Emmy for that. He was in Prelude to a Kiss, uh, Barnard Hughes. The, uh, I, remember the, I don't remember the episode on a judge in, in the Lou Grant Show, but I do remember Mason Adams was on that. <laughs> and I do as well, Mason Adams. <laughs> Hi. Huh. I uh, didn't you see the judge in that, Rossi? Hi, <laughs> oh, Rossi. Here's the judge. He's, he's going to be our judge in this uh, trial. 
and he's going to win an Emmy for this. Thank you. Thank you. With a name like Barnett Hughes, <laughs> he has to be a good actor. Thank you. I thought you were going to do Tonto. Where do you find Mr. Hughes in the... Are you just going to mumble and moan yes. Yes. and kvetch on the air? Is that, yes. is that your idea of rich, ribald humor? <laughs> I thought you were just going to say Tonto. And, you know, well, and talk so about you. So why she's throwing up now. <laughs> okay, how about you, James? How old is Barnard Hughes? Oh, boy, this is going to be a tough one. Oh, I Jesus. Say... Don't, don't be so dramatic, but James. Just tell me his age. Okay, okay. Oh, I say he'd be in his mid eighties. I'm gonna say eighty three. Okay, eighty three. Okay, okay. Hope. What do you think? Seventy nine. Seventy nine. Mm -hmm. That was good. The way you just said that out directly. Craig. Seventy seven. Craig says seventy seven. Okay, and uh, the lovely Ken. The lovely Ken <laughs> will come in at a solid even. 80 years old today. 80 years old on this very day. God bless him. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they haven't even, they still haven't. And he's, and he's, in fact, I, I, rem, I remember now reading about him in one of the trade magazines. They said uh, he loved his parents so much that he had his umbilical cord bronzed and he carries it around on the, on the back of his car in the rear window. Yep. Gross. Yeah, rear window <laughs> with all the stuffed animals. Yeah, <laughs> next to that, uh, the Hawaiian dancer and the little the dog just uh, you know moving up and down. Oh, right, right boy. there, right there is the bronzed umbilical cord. <laughs> and if you think that's not sentimental and just have had a lovely feeling to it, I, then I don't know what. Then you're not you're not sentimental. You're not my kind of person. It brings tears to my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Pete, what do you think? How old is Barnett Hughes, and how old, or how old is his um, umbilical cord? Either way, <laughs> I'll say seventy-eight. You'll say seventy-eight. Yeah. Hold on while I jot that down. <laughs> Okay. Uh, actually, Barnard Hughes is 80 yes. years old. That's right, and that means that uh, Ken Newman hit it right on the button. We have a whole lot of one-time winners. Everybody has scored at least one victory. Nobody more than that. So everybody's even at this point. And you didn't think this was going to be an exciting game. I thought it was going to be a real, I thought it was really going to be a real deadbeat. That shows you, you never know, even after all these years in broadcasting, you still can't tell. Yeah. The outcome. <laughs> okay, that's that about does it with, with people. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to give you events that happened on this date, which is July 16th. Mm -hmm. And uh, you tell me what year it happened. Some interesting things happened on this day. Let me see, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Just one moment. Here's the thing that I have about computer paper. These things on the on the borders were with the holes in it, you know, to track it through the printing machine. Uh huh. I can't bear it. I can't bear to look at that stuff. I have to rip it off. <laughs> I was going through an office building the other day, and I looked in, and there on a on a young lady's desk, a secretary, was all that paper. I leaped in. <laughs> were you wearing a cape? <laughs> no, I just, uh, I, you know, I just said, excuse me, I can't stand to see that stuff on there, and I I ripped it off like that. I do that. Oh, boy. I can't. It's a, you it's are, a thing. I've seen psychiatrists about that, and they, they, they can't analyze in any objective way why seeing those the holes in the paper there uh, on, the, on the rim. I think that's a very noble thing. It's a very noble thing. You're ridding the world of, of uh, holes on the side of their computer paper. Hold on. I didn't get a chance to hear you. I was ridding, I was ridding the paper here, the holes. <laughs> Tom, I got a question for you. Yes. Remember about three weeks ago, you bought your birthday book? Where was it after oh, all this? I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I misplaced it. Okay. Nobody stole it. It was my fault. I just I put it someplace and put some stuff on top of it. Oh, I believe good. it was a Reuben sandwich. <laughs> and as a result, I, I kind of lost it a little bit, but I dusted away the, the, kit, the mustard, and it's just as good as... Hold on. Hold, hold on. Hold on just one more second, please. <laughs> Oh, that's a long one. Look at that. Oh, that's a real long one. 
You know, uh, if I only had some bubble paper, we could really... Oh, this is really nice. There must be some use for this, these long strips of paper with holes in them. I think it's to keep the computer paper on track in the, in the, uh, in the printer. No, I know that, but I mean, once it comes, once it's all printed up, you don't need it anymore. Well, they, that, see, what they do is they attach it back to regular paper, <laughs> and then they can put it through again. Oh, it's I all see. part of the big oh, recycling. Oh, I see. So you mean I can, I can take this stuff here? Hold on a minute now. I can take this stuff, and uh, we can recycle it. Do you think it can be used to paste it back onto sure, something? Just, just tape it right back onto some other pieces of paper, and print it all out again. That's what I do. <laughs> what a lovely, exciting life you must lead, fella. Uh, okay, actually, uh, I'm, I'm true. Okay, here's here's a here's a, an event that happened on this day, which of course, as we've decided, and by by majority vote, is uh, July 16th, and it was on this date that the first parking meters were installed. I I won't even ask you where. I'll tell you. It was in Oklahoma City. Really? Yeah, Oklahoma City had the first parking meters. You'd think it'd be you, some you think busy New place. York or something. Yeah, I would think, and I, my very thought, Kit, I would have thought that some big metropolitan area, but it was not. It was in uh, in uh, Oklahoma City. It must have been hurting for revenue. Probably, yeah. Uh, okay, what year would that have been? What year do you think the first parking meters were installed? And uh, and if those are parking meters, I wonder if if uh, the uh, meter mates could have been far behind. What do you think, uh, James? What year do you think the uh, first parking meters were installed? Because you're closer to Oklahoma City, actually, is out there in Indiana than we are here in Massachusetts. So therefore, you have an edge on us. <laughs> I'll guess. That, that was a stupid comment by my on my part. What Wild you, guess, I'll say 1924. 1924. Okay. And uh, let's see. Craig, what do you think? 1921. 1921. Okay, that was the year my uh, my Uncle Harry went over Niagara Falls in a folding beach chair. <laughs> so I'll never forget that year. Uh, Hope, how, what year do you think the uh, first parking meters were installed? Um, 1935, and I want to know, can I send my dumb birthday game answers in by proxy next time? <laughs> can I send my dumb birthday game answers in by proxy? Yeah. Ken, what do you think? What would, If you were the host of this thing here, like I am, what would you re how would you respond to that? I wouldn't know how to react to something like that. The, I don't either, too. I think probably that, just no. <laughs> just uh, just kind of shake your head and go on with it. Pretend <laughs> she never said anything. Okay, Pete, what do you think? What year? I'm going to say 1935 also. Oh, 1935 also. Okay, and Ken, what do you say? I say 1940. 1940. Actually, 1935 is correct. So Pete and uh, and Hope uh, win that round, and they both now have two apiece. And Hope, please don't send your answer in by proxy. We'll miss <laughs> that beautiful laugh. <laughs> you can approximate your answers by... <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. Forget it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the Apollo. This is this one's about Apollo Eleven. Um, this this was the and, and this happened uh, on this date also, obviously in, on July sixteenth. Uh, Apollo Eleven blasted off from Cape Kennedy on the first manned mission to the surface of the moon, and on that. Uh, flight were astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. First mission to the surface of the moon. Okay, what now what year would that have been? For heaven's sakes. Let's ask, let me see, we'll start with uh, start with you, Ken. What year do you think that was? Well, I think that would have been uh, the very year I was born, the always wild and wacky 1968. Wild and Wacky, 1968. That's what I hear, anyway. Okay. Uh, James, what, what year do you, this comes to mind? I will have to agree. I'm going to say 1969. 1969. Okay. And uh, Hope? And I remember watching it on TV. I'm going to say 1967. 
And uh, Craig, what do you think? 1969. 1969. And Pete? I'll say 1967. 1967 or 57? 67. Say that again? 1967. Oh, 67. Right. Okay. Uh, the year was 1969. Yeah, yes. Okay, so that's James and Craig. We're getting all kinds of ties here. We got Craig, Pete, Hope, James, and uh, Hope. That's right. In fact, everybody but uh, Ken all have two apiece, and Ken has uh, one. He could win this next one, and that would be it. Would be oh it would be a six a five way tie. Okay, this is a, a, the District of Columbia. It's a question about the District of Columbia. Uh, on this date, the District of Columbia was established as the seat of the United States government. What year would that have been, for heaven's sakes? Craig, what do you think? Oh, boy, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, see? No, let's take a stab at 1889. 1889. Okay, Pete? Um... 1790, I'm going to say. 1790, I'm going to say. Okay, and what are you going to say, James? 1835. Okay, and Ken? Hmm. Uh, go with 1825. 1825. Okay, Hope? 1788. 1788. Okay, actually, the year was 1790. You were very close, Hope. Uh, Pete hit it right on the button. No, he said 1790. Uh, and so now he has won the game. Oh, my gosh. That's really a shame. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Why is it? Because you hate his guts and you wish he would not win? Is that uh, the no, reason? No, no. It's a shame because now that's the end of the game. No. Oh, oh, that part is a shame. Okay. Yeah. Well, if Ginger Rogers had only stayed alive long enough for the game, we could have guessed her age because she was born on this date. That's a really stupid comment to make, isn't it? Poor soul, that's so she dumb. She could have just hung on a little longer. Yeah. You know, she was born Virginia Catherine McMath in Independence, Missouri. In the same Harry Truman's hometown. Uh, anyway, she would, she would have been 84 years old today, and you would have all known that. It's still, it's still a great treat to watch her, her dancing with Fred Astaire in those great movies. What a grace and style that they had, which was just so lovely. Did you ever watch Star Search? Yeah. Give us see the see. Give us see the dancers on that on that program. They're they're more like acrobats. They roll over the whole thing, mm -hmm. and I keep thinking of the grace of, of Ginger Rogers or Sid Charisse and uh, Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire and that kind of that kind of dancing was just so beautiful. In fact, I was at a a club the other night and uh, saw people dancing, and they. They look kind of weird because uh -huh. they don't touch each other at all. They just kind of, they kind of look like they're having some kind of uh, physical spasms. <laughs> <laughs> like their their bones are becoming disconnected and the pain is rifing through. And it's kind of wiggling and jumping and, and the, is that beautiful to any of you? It's Which fun to do. To Depends on what's wriggling. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've, I've always well, felt that, 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 well, because... See, I don't, I don't really dance particularly well. In fact, I don't hardly dance at all. But I figure if you're gonna, if you're gonna go out to the dance floor, for the, the fun is holding somebody, you know, and you got that street. Yeah, I, I think so. And just standing there, you know, while you do a separate dance from them, and you kind of wriggle a lot, like, like, oh, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm sick. That's why it's so nice. Ballroom dance is coming back, though, Norm. I don't know if it's coming back. I guess maybe it's always been here to some point. I know there are, we've mentioned this, that we've had the, in colleges, they have ballroom dancing clubs, and they have competitions each year and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's lovely to watch uh, these kids dance and older people dance who really know. And one of the most erotic, come closer, I don't want everybody to hear this. We're here. One of the most erotic kind of dancing is with a couple Doing a tango. Oh my gosh. Oh god, that is so fantastic. Oh, stop. It's like watching a porno flick. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I'm it really is. Sorry, I can't see it. I know it. I wish you could. I wish I you I wish you could. 
because it is. But I love the music they do it too. Yeah, you just have just a without being able to see. Well, you you can imagine I've seen seen Scansu anyway. I'm, I'm sorry. Sort of. I think it depends on what's going on. You know what the dialogue is, or what the, you know what's going on surrounding it. I suppose. Yeah. Wait. Well, now, have you been blind since birth, Pete? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so okay. Now I just wondered. Uh, you can get turned down most mostly by the dialogue, by what they're saying, and so on. Yeah, and then of course today, like on on the PBS channels, we have the description. That yeah, yeah, there is there is another channel too, isn't there, where the announcer describes what's happening in the film. Yeah, Who's that's the, why I'm always watching mystery or nature or or um, right now masterpiece theater. Yeah, see now those described. Yeah, hey, Pete, I know you, that's not you breathing hard. Because you're talking. Who is who is that? Is that you, James? Yeah, I'm fixing me a cup of coffee to enjoy while I so what, listen to the show. So you're going <laughs> into, into the phone? Is that what you're doing? No. Oh, no, no, that isn't you, is it? Now, who's doing that? Is that you, Craig? No, I'm just listening. Maybe there's somebody tapping the line. It's a ghost. ghost. You know what it is? I'll bet you. I'll bet you it's a, It's one of the management people here at WBC. <laughs> They're probably tapping that. I keep saying you don't have to tap the line to hear what's going on. Just turn your radio and it's going <laughs> over the air. But they don't seem to understand that <laughs> management. Yeah. What do they know? If they know anything, would they be management? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, listen. I want to thank all of you for playing this world game. I wish we could go further, but uh, just no. No big names born on July 16th. Not too many on July 15th yesterday, so we, we did a lot of the July 17th ones, <laughs> if you can follow what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, that's the whole thing. Yeah, I was just going to tell you, you know, I had taken ballroom dancing for a short time at uh, Perkins, so I know what that's like. Yeah, it is kind of nice. See, it is. Yeah, and you, you can you hold a girl. Mm. Oh, hold a guy, I suppose, depending on, on, <laughs> on you know what your slant on life is. Yeah, but perfect. there's something very lovely about doing that, and there's something lovely about dancing, uh, I, about watching people who know what they're doing, you know, gliding around the floor. It's, re it's really a lovely thing to watch. The uh, dance we did was something called the Frug, and I don't remember what that was. It was that was a popular dance for a while. I'm I'm not sure either. You mostly moved, you know, in a certain direction, but you stood still. There was no movement of the legs or feet or anything. Yeah. Just the body turning right or left. I forget what it was now. When I was very young, there was, uh, and I remember, it, I remember going to a dance with a very proper young lady who was totally humorless and uh, kind of dumb. No, she wasn't dumb. <laughs> she was humorless, but not dumb. And uh, they played the Bumps of Daisy. Do you remember? Do you remember that? That was where you. You kind of you kind of uh, turn away from each other and you whack each other on the on the butt with your own. <laughs> I butt. Made it. Sounds like yeah. a hustle. Mm. Yeah. Sounds well, kinky. Well, she was absolutely shocked by that. <laughs> I guess. And I was a popular song that went with it. Yeah. And uh, and boom, a daisy. Da 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 da. boom. Yeah. Yeah. Bump, no. Well, that no. That's another one. Ta ra ra boom de ra delay. It was whatever that is. That's ta ra ra boom de a. Yeah. That's that's a turn of the century. Yeah. Kind of old old fashioned song. <laughs> this, well, this is old fashioned too, but it was a bumps a daisy, and uh, I, I I was a shy kid, and she was a prissy kind of humorless <laughs> kid, and so when we bumped butts, <laughs> somehow somehow I think we both wanted to die at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, other people were doing it with wild abandon, and then you then you all broke out into break dancing <laughs> immediately after that, right? I believe. That's how breakdancing came up the Mississippi to Chicago, and that's how it was born <laughs> in New Orleans. Thank you. Anyway. You know, the other funny thing, Norm, is that if you go back over the years, say in the 60s and the 70s, we had groups like the Association, and when the uh, cities and towns had, oh, the high schools had a winter ball or the prom and some of the uh, other youth groups, the groups then made slow dances that they could have a nice slow dance. You know, past uh, 15, 20 years, any of the uh, well-known groups today, uh, they don't have any slow music, what we would consider, would have considered doing a waltz to. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Totally amazing. Yeah, so there, you, you mean there's no holding each other anymore at all on the with the current dances? It's, 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 Nothing. Uh, it's it's country. It doesn't seem like it. Yeah. Isn't there still a sailor group? Country music. 
or country music would be, yeah. Uh, well, oh, th this place I was at the other night with this rock band, but they were older rock musicians. I mean, they were, you know, up in their mid-30s and stuff. And they were playing Bee Gees things, and the Bee Gees recorded some slow things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there were couples out there really holding each other and everything. Uh, so I guess I guess uh, if you want to slow dance, you have to kind of pull out older songs. You get the feeling that I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm kind of out of touch with all of this. But anyway, I want to thank all of you for playing the game with us because you're all just as well. You hold on, Pete, because we'll get your name and address yep. and send you something really junky, okay? Okay, great. I'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> it, it, it will be. It, it'll be something really worth throwing away. Uh, you'll like it. <laughs> I probably won't do that, though. <laughs> okay, Craig, I want to thank you very much for being on with us. I appreciate it. No, no, it's my pleasure. Yep. Bye-bye now. And uh, there goes my fast finger there. Didn't mean to clip him off so quickly. Uh, and James, take care of yourself, and thank you for playing the game. Oh, you're welcome, Norm. Good talking to you. We'll talk to you next weekend. Okay, that'd be fine. And Ken? I will see you next weekend as well. Well, I won't see you, but I will speak with you. That's right, too, because see, the way it sounds, it sounds like you and I are sitting across the table from each other, and they don't realize that we're miles apart, that you're way up there in the Prudential building on the 740th floor, and I'm only on the 700th floor here at WBZ Broadcast Center. <laughs> Do you ever get a chance to come to the studios here? Because they're adding sections on. They have a new farm and food shop here now, and they have... Uh, They've been, um, up on the on the 56th floor. They've uh, they've enlarged the museum of old broadcasters. <laughs> well, I have noticed a lovely new uh, front they put on there. That's just the beginning. When you come in and take the elevator up to some of the higher floors, and you see the WBZ gift shop, for example, and the trinkets with souvenirs of. And of course, the uh, WBZ Hotel and Casino. Oh, that is lovely. It's right up on the top, right next to the penthouse apartment. <laughs> yeah, we love That's kind of fun. That's that's one of the exciting spots. But it's become a tourist thing. It's on the WBZ, uh, the uh, rather, the City of Boston Freedom Trail now. Did you know that? <laughs> I did not know yeah, that. No. Yeah, we're part of that. There's the Paul Revere House. There's all of that kind of state house. And there's the WBZ Broadcast City. Why don't I just shut up? Wouldn't that be a good idea? I never thought of it. Anyway, thanks a lot, Ken. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, then. Bye-bye right. now. Oh, golly, Jeekers. It's, it's at 3.46 already. I thought it, I thought it was at least 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon by now. Anyway, it's uh, 13 minutes before.